Hey, Christine Johnson Sewing Friends, welcome. Today we are talking about the Christine Johnson Patterns Moto Jacket, and we are gonna be assembling our pattern and cutting it out. So I wanna cover a couple things with this particular jacket that we're gonna be doing. First of all, I have done the tiled version, and when I have laid this out, I have used a glue stick to overlap the sheets of paper, and I hung it up on my window <clears throat> to be able to line up the notches and the markings of the actual borders around the outside and in the meantime i've gone ahead and i've prepared my pattern so i've cut out all my pattern pieces in my size which is a medium and now i'm getting ready to lay them out now if you look at the pattern instructions here and i have them on my laptop computer right here you're going to want to open up your pdf so that you can see the pages on the left hand side and the the PDF of the page that we're working with here. It's easier to see. I don't print out my instructions. Some people do. I like prefer to have them on the screen as I'm going through them because I can zoom in and out uh, or on my laptop or my iPad. I can zoom in and out on the photos to be able to see details of the construction. So what I'm going to do here is I'm taking a look right now at our moto jacket layouts. And there are some pieces that are cut on the on uh, doubled, that is on the fabric, and there are some that are cut singled. And so we're going to want to cut the double ones first and then unfold our fabric and cut the singles. And I'm working with navy blue ponte fabric. This is from bohofabrics.com. And um, I'm going to have it my ready, my tape measure, my pattern pieces already cut out, and then my pattern weights. And I use um, rocks from really from all over the world um, that I have collected as my pattern weights. In addition, I also mark and chalk my pattern off. You can use kids chalk. Um, but if you don't have kids chalk, almost everybody has a little piece of, and I can't find where mine's gone, but I, almost everybody has a little piece of um, uh, leftover soap, you know, that tiny little sliver of soap makes great pattern markings as well because it washes out obviously when you're done. So let's go ahead and let's walk through this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay the, the pieces on the fabric using the 60 inch wide layout. So I've aligned my selv edge here, I've pre-washed and dried my fabric, and I'm going to line them on the selv edge here and I'm going to go ahead and lay them out for the pieces that get cut twice. And in that case, those pieces are the collar, uh, the back, neck facing, okay. the sleeves, which is right here, and the moto jacket, let's see, pattern piece nine, which is, whoops, where's nine? Let's see, the, get the fronts out of the way here. Um, the side back, which is pattern piece number six, and pattern piece number nine, which is the front facing. We're gonna need two of these. So we're gonna set these aside. The rest of these get all get cut one. So you have a back, you have a left front, you have a left front facing piece, and you have a right front. These are all cut singly, all right side up. So we're gonna set those aside. We won't be working with those just now. We're gonna focus on the cutting out of these ones here. So we're gonna go ahead and lay this out on our pieces here. And I'm following the drawing here on our laptop computer of the suggested layout. And I'm following it pretty much exactly. And I'm gonna show you how to line up grain lines here today too. So I'm following it pretty much exactly here. We've got here. I like to make efficient use of my pattern space here. I have, let's move those guys out of the way. And let's wedge that right in there, slide my laptop over. Okay, I like to make efficient use of my space. So I have laid my pieces out. Now I wanna check grain because the last thing you want is for these things to be off grain. And how I check grain is I measure from my selvage, which I have lined up both edges here. And I check grain by grabbing my tape measure and laying it down on the one end of the arrow and measuring right to the end. So I've got five and a half here. And then I lay the other one down and discover I don't quite have five and a half here, so I need to rotate this in a little bit until I get exactly five and a half. Now that pattern piece is positioned correctly, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to either pin that in place or mark it with my pattern weights. Now you notice it moved a little when I marked it with my pattern weights, so I wanna make sure that I'm still on grain. So five and a half there and five and a half there, perfect. So I am satisfied with my grain. I'm gonna go ahead and lay the rest of my rocks out. And I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and check the other pattern pieces exactly the same way by laying this down here, measuring all the way to the end. This is 20 and a quarter. And then coming down here, laying that down there. And this one's off, that's not 20 and a quarter. So I'm gonna slide it down till I get 20 and a quarter there. And then I'm gonna measure both 
And just to make sure it's has not moved, slide that down a little bit. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and blend those pieces. So once I have them all down, I'm going to draw around the edges with my either my children's chalk, Taylor's chalk, or my sliver of soap, which works fabulously. I'm going to cut my notches out so they've got them. And then if I'm using dots to mark something, you can also use the soap, but sometimes that wears off if you handle it too much. So you might want to use a wash away marking pencil um, if you have one of those or wash away marking um, marker. So once I go ahead and get all these, these laid out, I'm going to go ahead and trace around the outside of every one of them. I'm going to lift them up and then I'm going to cut them out without the pattern pieces in place. And we do that for a couple of reasons because Christine wants you to get comfortable with the shapes of your pattern. If you're cutting around something, you're not focusing on the shapes of the pattern. So by, by tracing them and lifting them off, you can, you can not only see the shapes of the pattern so you can kind of learn what patterns look like so you can make adjustments, but you can also make some subtle adjustments. For example, if you want to cut something a little bit wider, particularly in the body of something, like when I cut the back or the side back, if you want to cut something a little wider, you can cut on the outside of your chalk line instead of the inside of your chalk line. It'll give you an extra eighth of an inch on each side, which will help you get a little bit more room if you think you're going to need it. So that's just one of the advantages of doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll cut these out and we'll return with another video. Thank you.